The BCN Divine Triangle. Black Christian nationalism seeks to change society in order to accomplish the liberation of black people and realizes that we, as a people, are engaged in a struggle for power and for our very survival. We utilize the BCN Divine Triangle as a godly symbol to access and connect with the mystical powers that was in our ancestors and the cosmic energy and creative intelligence of the universe. We believe in the raging desire for freedom born of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the healing powers of the revolutionary BCN group process, which begins the liberation of black people by erasing 400 years of behavior modification. We believe in the transforming power of positive righteousness, where we as a people take a stand for righteousness over evil. We pledge to let the power of the divine triangle work its wonders in us. We pledge to take the power of the divine triangle to African people across the world. May God and the black nation be our witness. separated and came to rest on each of them. Mm -hmm. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Yeah. Well, Amen. 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 Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. As well as to the understanders and the doers. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we um, know that the um, apostles they didn't just receive the Holy Spirit. They didn't just like all of a sudden come to the upper room. They having dinner and all that stuff, and boom, the Holy Spirit hit them. We would like to think it's just that easy, but it's really 
not that easy. Well, he right. know that they did not receive the Holy Spirit without putting in the necessary work or without making the necessary changes. Yeah. Well, right. the All right. apostles was trying to hold things together after Jesus' death. They came to the realization that they had to make a decision to commit themselves to the movement. Oh, right. yeah. The apostles had to submerge their individual needs mm -hmm. for the need of the group. Well, yeah. well. They had to make a lot of personal sacrifices. Yes, right. they did. You know, like they had to come out of themselves. I mean, because I'm sure, you know, we don't know. We went back there. Some of them probably had good jobs before they gave everything in and decided mm -hmm. to follow this Jesus movement, you well, know, this movement that we're following today. Well, that we're saying that we're going to commit our all and all to. Mm -hmm. Right? So, basically, it didn't come easy to them. Mm -hmm. They had to, they probably argued. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, they were yeah. like, okay, well, who in charge of the GG? Right. Jesus did. We're going, who in charge oh, now? Oh, yeah. What That's we right. going to do? You know uh, what I'm saying? So, look, well, I got to listen to you. You've just been here two years. I've been here five. Why can't I be in charge? You know what I'm saying? So surely they were going through some terrible, trying times. Oh, they yeah. realized that in order to carry on the movement that Jesus had started, they had to make some personal sacrifices and they had to submit themselves and reject individualism. All right. Now today, in this world, mm -hmm. it is hard to give total commitment. When the world we live in is completely committed to the value and norm of individualism. That's right. well, amen. This norm has been reinforced in every aspect of our lives. So right now we live in the Western life and we live in the Western world and this is pretty much a value that was created by uh, the white power institutions mm -hmm. and that power institution has undermined the possibility of black unity well, and black struggle well, against oppression and powerlessness. Amen. Amen. Now individualism Merely means that each individual feels that he is the most important thing right. mm. in this world. Right. My Lord. And when I say merely, <laughs> I don't mean it's simple, uh -huh. don't mean to diminish it. It just means that it is easy to define, mm -hmm. but it is hard to accomplish. Well. So it's easy. We can say, oh, individualism means that I don't care about nobody but myself. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But to change that, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the task. Oh, yeah. That's the task. That's the task. You build your whole life on getting what you want mm -hmm. and getting ahead as an individual. We don't think about the group. Our concern is just about our little immediate family, like my mother, my father, my daughter, mm -hmm. my son, mm -hmm. my nephew, my mm -hmm. niece, my grandbabies, and all that. So basically, the it has to extend beyond just our little personal uh, family. Well, right. Today, the fabric of unity is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many individuals that don't get it. We, right. we, we don't understand the sense of unity. There is no concrete or any cement that bonds us together. Well, we don't realize that at some point we've got to take this serious mm -hmm. and we've got to come together and we have to up submerge ourselves before we can get anything done and build a nation. Well, now, all right. In, uh, this is an individualistic culture. Mm -hmm. That's right. And let's talk about that. What, the, what does that mean? Let's, let, let's talk about that because as I was doing my research, I went through all the training tools and materials that Jeremoji uh, Baby Ajman gave us. And I mean, I'm telling you, I found so much well. on individualism. Uh -huh. I said, I don't have to write a thing. I can just actually copy and paste. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, it's got to be that, that, that it meant Jeremoji knew that was at the root of our problems. That's right. Mm -hmm. that, that's the root. You know what I'm saying? If we cannot submerge ourselves, then we are lost as, as a people. Amen. All right. We are lost mm -hmm. as a people. An individualistic culture is a society which is characterized by individualism, mm -hmm. right? 
which basically puts emphasis on the individual versus the group. Mm -hmm. That's right. They are centered around feeling independent, like mm -hmm. you don't need anybody else, mm -hmm. and that God going to save you personally. Yeah. Well. You, individually, he's going to save you. You don't need any of your right. brothers and your sisters. Well. You know, but basically, we, we, we're disconnected with one another, and we don't feel or see any value in anyone other than ourselves. Well. Mm. Individualism is a negative belief system. Well, all right. When members operate from an individualistic framework, there is value for self only. There is no value for the nation. Mm -hmm. There's no value for the group. Well, and there's no value for the members all right. mm -hmm. of the group. Mm -hmm. Now, individualism comes, peeks his little head up, mm -hmm. <laughs> in anywhere, uh -huh. everywhere. All right. We have personal individualism. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, I'm just only concerned about what benefits me. That's right. I'll give a little money. A little money. I'll give a little time. Mm -hmm. And as long as I can come on Sunday and don't worry about anything else, I'm going to be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care what the church is going through. All I know is that I'm doing all right because okay. God got me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we also got individualism on other levels. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We got generational individualism. Well, have mercy. Okay. Now, to, to me, I thought about that, and it's basically even between the generations. Well, we are disconnected mm -hmm. that's right. with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like the young people, now they can do that stuff. They can do it fast. Mm -hmm. They can do it fast, and we must give them that credit, and we must value that they are able to do that. But I, I would say us more seasoned people, I wouldn't even call us old. You know what I'm saying? Well. We, we like to do it to the best. Mm -hmm. So why, why, why can't we take those two things and combine them and everybody realize the value of each other? Mm -hmm. And we move this nation ahead and we process this nation and we make things move on a quicker level than, well. we, we, than it's moving now. Amen. We must value each other. We have to give up. We have to submerge our individualism. Mm -hmm. We have congregational individualism. My Lord. My Lord. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. We, we, we are a congregational church. We say that we are about the liberation of black people. That's right. But I can say for a fact that some of us have been right here in this same church at least, I mean, and I'm not even talking about how many years, but I know for the last seven years, we all been together. Well. And for us not to realize that we are all that we got after seven years, well. something is not right with this picture. And if we do not submerge our individualism, mm -hmm. then we are fighting a losing battle. All right. We don't value one another. We don't see any value in anybody other than ourselves. Well. My Lord. You know, sometimes the church can become Stagnant. That's right. And it doesn't realize or hold all this individualistic stuff that's going on. We don't hold it accountable. And it's not to say, okay, on this side you're being individualistic or on that side you're being individualistic, but one of our missions and one of our purposes here in the church is to lead black people to the liberation and the experience to the liberation of black pe people and the experience of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not easy. Well, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard. But we have to understand that individualism is a product of the slave culture. My Lord. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands what the slave culture is. Right? You know, we are mm -hmm. an oppressed people. We have been subjected to some harsh conditions. Well, that's right. Some harsh conditions. So pretty much we had to adapt. We escaped. We used different methods by which to ease the pain. Uh -huh. But we created a culture that was not good for black people. Right. We created a culture just to 
maybe soothe some of our pain. Uh, right. We created a culture that would just kind of rub a little alcohol on the sore or mm. something like that. All but right. when we look at it and deep down inside, it has hurt us because it has always caused us to identify with our oppressor right. and to feel that we are less than our oppressor mm -hmm. and it causes us to accept the myth of black inferiority. Well, right. amen. And which we say is a myth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, as we talk about Pentecost today, defines mortification as one of the six processes for total commitment. Mm -hmm. Now, mortification deals with the process of destroying the ego, well. the selfish ego. Mm -hmm. We must reject our commitment to individualism, mm -hmm. we must be willing to do as much for others well, as we are willing to, to do for ourselves. Well, sure. right. Okay, and that brings me to my topic today. You raising your hand? I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I wanted to, can I add something? Sure. Yes, I, I was, when you were going over your lesson, I was thinking about when uh, Jesus was called, you were dealing with ego and individualism. And he was baptized, and then he went into the wilderness, and uh, the devil tempted him and said, I can give you all these things yes. if you worship me. All this is mine, but, you know, Jesus said, no, I got to worship God and God alone. So he struggled with or had to struggle with individualism, whether he was going to serve God or whether he was just going to serve himself. I, when you were talking about it, I just thought about it. It's interesting. Yes, I mean, you know, Jesus had to go, like you said, through a wilderness period. But, uh, and not only Jesus, but um, the disciples or apostles, or you know, they also went through a wilderness period. That's right. And we today, we're constantly going through yeah. mm -hmm. wilderness periods. You know what I'm saying? Because it, 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 there is no set road. That, that we, we have to um, open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and let God lead us. Oh, yeah. Because that is the only way. None of us really knows what is down the road or what's going to happen. But as long as we realize that we have committed ourselves mm -hmm. and we're giving to God and we're letting God lead us, that is the best oh, yeah. that we can do. Amen. Amen. That's the best that we can do. Now, individualism is the beast within. As well as the beats without. BCN teaches us that. Have mercy. BCN teaches us that. And then, I mean, like, why do you think it was so important to Jeremoji that we change our mindset regarding individualism? Because like I said, I've, I've read uh, throughout every book he's got. When, when you do that PDF search, Mm -hmm. You can find individualism in just about on every page. Oh, yeah. Every page. Oh, yeah. So, like, do we actually see the need to submerge our individualism? Wow. And I'm just asking as a congregation here right now. Yes, sir. I, I think it's necessary because our condition is not an individualistic condition. Our condition is a, is a condition as a group of people. Well. So if, we, if we're going to address our condition, we need to address it minus the individualism. We need to address it as a group. So I think that's oh, yeah. where this, the individualism has to be submerged, um, eradicated, and then we can function as a group of people rather than that. Because individually, individually we, we can't do anything, anything. about our condition. Amen. Yeah. But as a group, we can. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, individualism is the greatest sin, and God made us a communal people. Yes, in yes. Africa. Mm -hmm. And when we study our history and our culture, we find that as a communal people, we built the greatest nations that have ever existed. Well, when we were working collectively together, I am because we are. Uh, it is our oppression that separated us from communalism and have us steep in individualism, which means that we will never have the ability to do what we have done before because each person is trying to do their own thing. Their own thing. And you know, and it's even hard, even though we are in the church and we say that we understand that liberation is the beast, it's, it's, it's hard 
to take that pill yourself, you know, mm -hmm. to sit there and to evaluate yourself and realize that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm being individualistic too. I got some individualism going on here. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's not like we, mm -hmm. exactly, you know, like we can easily look at the people outside the right. church and say, oh, they are so individual. They are just dripping <laughs> with individualism. <laughs> drip, drip, drip. Yes. But it's, it's hard for us to uh, evaluate ourselves and realize that we suffer from the same condition. Right. We suffer from the same sickness. That's right. Most of the things that I've heard, and even within the readings, they're talking about us inside of the church anyway. I mean, it's, it's talking about bigger society, but it was always about us. And that's why all those structures were put in place because it is the most difficult thing for a human being to do. Not everybody, there are exceptions, but for most people to constantly deal with my own personal individualism. And according to what we believe in, what Jerry Walsh and it's impossible basically to do it by yourself. Like I'm going to change myself from being that individualistic because even when he, he, he said he says everybody and all, so that had to include the founder as well. So he didn't exclude himself outside of that. So he was understanding that he needed to be in, in a process. So without the mirroring, uh, and even when you get the mirroring, it does not mean that we're going to necessarily change. You know, so right. um, it's, it's all the processes together. Uh, spiritual, mind, body, and spirit. So individualism is is a beast. It's, it, it's, it's, it's something like you know how like, we use the process or the group process is like um, people in Narcotics Anonymous or AA. Some of those processes we take. Like we're we might not be addicted to drugs and alcohol, but we are addicted to self, to the self centered part of us. I'm addicted to me. I'm gonna get me, me. some type of way. I'll help somebody else. I give you a little bit. But the focus is on me. Mm. Um, That's right. The right. cost, well, I know that means you're kind of telling me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, that I, I do understand exactly, you know, um, what you're saying. And it, it, it is important and it is upon um, all of us. Uh, basically, if someone will read for me Matthew 6, 24, then I'm going to kind of move on into the, the meat of the topic that I'm trying to get across here this morning. No one can serve two masters. Well. I repeat that. No one can serve two masters. Well. Oh, yeah. You will hate the one and love the other. Well. Or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Well. You cannot serve both God and money. Ooh, my and Lord. And and my Lord. <laughs> All right. And when we um, look at this verse, it, it says you cannot serve God and money at the same time. But we have to like take that a little bit further and look at that that mm -hmm. money. You know, money is the root of all evil, is well, what they say. So we have to look at that as of the world over here. We have to look at this as of God. So basically, when they're speaking of money, we just don't just talk about, we're not just talking about money, coins or dollar bills or anything, but pretty much the lifestyle that um, is created, that's attached to money and our love of money. That's right. Either we give commitment to God, and the rebuilding of his kingdom, or we succumb <coughs> to the worldly ways, mm, right? which remember. includes individualism, but we cannot serve both. Well, How can we love God mm -hmm. and love the slave culture at the same time? Well, now, somebody can tell me that. We probably could solve a whole lot of problems. We could pack up and go home and, and, right. and call it a done deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but how can we love God and love the slave culture at the same time. Wow. I mean, how can I want, you know, like, mm. that, that, that means if we love the world, we don't truly understand what black Christian nationalism means or what it um, stands for. That's right. It doesn't mean that, you know, we, we, we're not aware of the world that's out there because we have to live in it and we have to work in it and we have to enter it each and every day. But Jeremoji also taught us that we have to change the mindset 
We have to change how we think. Mm -hmm. We cannot continue to be individualistic and think that we're going to build a nation. Right? Yeah. A nation building requires a communal group. Well, and that's what we say we are here in the church. And so at some point, you know, we all have to take a uh, break and think about it and reevaluate ourselves and see just where we are on the pole. I mean, are we closer to individualism or are we closer to um, communalism? Mm -hmm. But we have to think about that. We cannot forget that the historic Jesus, he was a revolutionary leader. Mm -hmm. He was sent by God, by God mm -hmm. to the black nation Israel, and his mission was to root out the individualism mm -hmm. and the identification with the oppressor, mm -hmm. which had corrupted them. Well. It was to give them a sense that they could build their own nation, to give them confidence in their selves and realize that once that they put the group and, uh, before their own personal needs, they could build a nation. Mm -hmm. Now, this was the Jesus that was given to us in the uh, three books of the Bible, mm -hmm. the synoptic gospel. They taught us how Jesus really was trying to not, you know, turn the other cheek, you know, but he actually was about trying to build God's nation here, and he realized that people needed to submerge their uh, individualism. Now, mortification, it provides the individual in the church with a new identity mm -hmm. based on communal values and norms expressed in one's devoted group membership. Amen. Amen. The group is our salvation. Oh, yeah. And as long as we can stay with our group and have the same values that our group have, then we'll be all right. What I would like to read, uh, or I would like for someone to read, is just an excerpt from the Black Christian Nationalist Creed. Now, the, the creed is what we believe in. We get as four statements yep. that we believe in. Well, and Jeremiah, and, and in there, there is a belief about individualism. Mm -hmm. And if I could get someone just to read that with some conviction, and it just will let you know that individualism mm -hmm. has been a problem or an issue for black people for God knows so long. So it's not new. It's not new. I believe that both my survival and my salvation, salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism, and so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of black people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and programs of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Amen. I like that word when they say talk. It has to be taught. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Not talk. You just, it ain't going to happen. Right. Amen. Right. Well, you, you have to learn. Learn. I mean, when you're in a world that where you are, like, um, living off of so many um, taught negative behaviors, mm -hmm. you have to be taught positive That's right. behaviors. You know That's what I'm right. saying? It doesn't just come. It's a learned process that we all have to go through. And we do understand that one of the main ways to do that is when we change our mindset and the way we um, um, think. Amen. Amen. Black Christian nationalism, it calls uh, black people together for total commitment That's to right. the liberation struggle. Mm. Now, total commitment requires a submergence of individualism in the black nation and just the acceptance of the values mm -hmm. that the church has to offer. Wow. Basically, even though we were created out of the substance of God and you know God made us in his own image and all that, mm -hmm. one thing we fail to realize and that, that is that we are in an evil, well, evil. evil world. Oh, an right. evil world where there is so much crime, corruption, People don't think about God anymore. I mean, some people, they talk about how they don't even go to church. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I don't see how people could live um, every day and not experience God well. or seek 
God in some kind of way. So basically, we're born in an evil, racist world. Mm -hmm. Basically, in this world, we do not identify with God mm -hmm. or with our inner divinity. Mm -hmm. We identify with DBI. Wow. And I know that's going way back. I mean, most of the people in here are a long time members, so I'm that's sure everybody knows what that means, right? The Declaration of Black Inferiority. My Lord. How can we continue to identify with our oppressor and not realize the Jesus potential in us? Mm. No man can serve two masters. Sure, yeah. How can we want to serve uh, you know, out in the world and think that we're serving God at the same time? There's no way. There's no way you're going to love one mm -hmm. and you're going to hate the other. Mm. One is going to be loved, be loved and one is going to be despised. And well, you can guarantee that there will be one that you serve more than the other. Oh, yeah. So I haven't seen too many times where people have been able to um, live of the world and, and commit totally to God too. So we have to make decisions. That's right. And that is a decision that has to be made generally here in the church, not just by members or a few members, but that is something that has to be decided by every congregant mm -hmm. of this church. Mm -hmm. We all must make that decision. Mm -hmm. Now, we draw upon God's Holy Spirit every day. Oh, yeah. We're not drawing upon His Spirit for no reason. That's We're right. not drawing upon His Spirit so that we can be individually saved and taken to heaven. We draw upon the Holy Spirit that gives us strength and energy for the liberation of black people. Well, and that's for the liberation of black people everywhere. Well, we must be in all right. or we must be out. Well, there is no in between. We Lord. must give total commitment to the liberation of black people. Jesus. And that means that sometimes the road is not easy. Oh, you yeah. don't get it right every time. Oh, yeah. You throw me out. Do you toss me out because I made a mistake? Uh, do we? No. no. We, we, we have to nurture each other and cultivate each other and strengthen one another well, because we are all that we got. Well, we are all that we got. And if you think that we're bad, you wait till you see something. Yeah. You're going to come back and say, oh, my God, thank you for the shrines of the black Madonna. Because, amen, we have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. All right. And it's not just here in our church, it's outside in the world. But if mm. we're not strong and strengthened right here within the church, well. then we're not going to survive when we try to take it outside. That's, That's right. right. That's right. May I make a point? Yes. We have evolved a philosophy in the nation of developing the best self. Yes. And some have asked the question, is that not individualism? Right. right. And we have to right. say, no. Yeah. Right. The best self means that you're doing all that you can do to be the best that God has made you to be. Fulfill your fullest potential for the service of the group. Yeah. That's the best self strategy. So it's not individualism where you're trying to do all you can do for the service of yourself. So we need to be clear on those two things. Yes, and, and that's something um, that members, like all members, don't get it as um, easily or as swift as other members. But we have to understand that um, no one is in the same place at the same time. So we always have to make sure that we're willing to teach well. and, and guide mm -hmm. to where we need to be. Yes, you got. I'll give you one minute. <laughs> one minute. Yes, brother. I heard what Wallen was saying, but when it was presented, it was it wasn't presented with no processes behind it. I remember this distinctly the best thing about it that it has no process. It was not directed as I'm doing this to be a part of a group. The first thing that was put together between having a conversation and coming together with our gifts for people were right now, I want a Mercedes as being my best self. So this particular delivery did not show at the end that this had anything to do with the liberation of black people. I know I asked the question over and over 
and over. What's the step? What is the process? Give, give me something because it sounds really good to be the best that I can. That you can be. But then the, the next thing, how are we going to get there? There's always been processes in black Christian nationalism. And everything that we did that was none. And I even said, why would you put this out without having some type of development behind it, right? So you're going to get critique behind it. So now, my minute is up. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it, it's not that um, you cannot question any yeah. things that go on. I'm sorry, yeah, go I'm ahead. I'm just going to try to sum it up for both sides. It's a okay, get ready to start doing that. It's all fault, okay? So uh, Best self is being the best black Christian nationalist. So that you can that's be. It. Uh, that, that, that's it. That's, that's it. That's say it again, brother. And you say it one more time. So best self best. is being the best black Christian nationalist you can be. That Amen. you can be. That Amen. you can be. That's right. That's right. right. It is not separate and apart. Yes, yes, Apollo. Uh, in terms of that, um, some you know, in terms of trying to do that, and then do uh, in terms of the being the best black Christian national, then your best self, we still have to have something that leads and ties it all together. You know, we can say that, but you know, the, we got to figure out how to tie it together as a church, That's so we all can on. be one mm -hmm. and stop, you know, not here over here, no attack over here because right. you ain't. You ain't, get, you ain't get it right, so why get that on me on the left side? Because you ain't get it right now, I don't consume what you're trying to do. So, you know, until we uh, get ourselves together as a church, as a people, we will always be torn in two places. Exactly. But it, it, it's like we can't sit and say, okay, I'm going to wait for you to come to the middle. Right. And they say, I'm going to wait. No, you got to come to the middle first. You know, right. we got to all come to the middle because right. this is all about the most important thing, and that's the liberation of black people. Of black people. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I just want to end with this one thing here. And this is a, a quote by Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey says, it is so hard. So difficult mm -hmm. to find men who will stick to a purpose, mm -hmm. who will maintain a principle for the worth of that principle, mm -hmm. for the good of that purpose. Mm -hmm. And if there is a race that needs such men in this world today, God Almighty know that it is the race of which I am a member. Mm -hmm. The race needs men of vision and ability, well. men of character and above all men of honesty mm -hmm. and that is so hard to find so i say today when you stand for something don't fall continue keep it moving keep it going because it is hard to find people that stand for something and to find people that stands for something that is positive well, it is always good to talk to talk but it's even better to walk the walk <laughs>